My name is Mike Stout, uh, 72 years old. Uh, married, live in Castle Shannon, a suburb of Pittsburgh. Nice working class community, very multinational. It's perfect for uh, working people and retired people. I became a social activist uh, around 18, 19 years old. Um, this was around the 1967, 1968 period. Uh, there was convergence, uh, a youth revolution with an anti-war movement, with a workers movement, with a civil rights movement, all came together in that period, let's say 1968, 69. Probably uh, my early, earliest activism was reflected in my music uh, uh, from a very early age. Uh, in fact, when I was a young teenager, I wanted to be a singer-songwriter and follow in the steps of Bob Dylan and moved to New York City to be a folk singer and a songwriter and got a recording contract in 1969 uh, after I was there less than a year. I think a turning point uh, for me, uh, uh, like most people uh, back in those days, around 1969-1970, was there was a sequence of events, uh, a major oil spill in the Pacific Ocean by Standard Oil, uh, the Cuyahoga River caught on fire, and of course the Love Canal in New York. And those events literally were a, a fuse that lit my consciousness and exploded my, uh, in my spirit to want to do something about the environment. I remember uh, April 22nd, 1970, like it was yesterday, I attended the very first Earth Day rally in New York City. There were hundreds of thousands of people in Central Park. Uh, there was hundreds of thousands in San Francisco. Uh, all over the country, people stood up uh, for the first time in unison and declared the environment was important and we need to do something about it. So from 1977 to 1987, I worked in the Homestead Steel Mill. I uh, rose from assistant grievance man to grievance man to chairman of the grievance committee. And one of our locals' uh, uh, dearest, uh, most important issues was safety and health. Safety and health inside the mill and safety and health outside the mill. We didn't see a separation between the two. We drank the same water as people in the community. We breathed the same air. And uh, the issues were the same for us. Uh, U.S. Steel uh, was polluting the valley like to no end and our local union was involved in two lawsuits uh, and U.S. Steel uh, settled the lawsuit and agreed to clean the uh, air up uh, and clean the uh, water up and instead bought Marathon Oil and shut the plant down. So I think like a lot of young people uh, who are not quite aware of what their response, personal responsibilities were and stuff. I was just like that. I, when I smoked in my 20s, I remember dumping uh, entire uh, ashtrays of cigarette butts out in parking lots and littering uh, too and totally unaware of it. It was after I quit smoking and I saw somebody do that that the alarms went off in my head and I said, this ain't right. And uh, I think that was a turning point. Uh, of course, another turning point was in the late 1980s, around 1989 uh, to be exact. Uh, the state of Pennsylvania initiated uh, state recycling laws, and all communities with 5,000 or more had to recycle glass, plastic, newspaper and paper, cardstock, et cetera, et cetera. And uh, that was the beginning of my uh, student lesson in recycling and how important that was and what role it played in uh, uh, our personal habits as well as our community habits. Three years ago, I, uh, along with about eight other individuals, we initiated a chapter of the Isaac Walton League of America in Allegheny County. Uh, the Isaac Walton League is the oldest uh, and biggest environmental conservation group. In fact, it's 100 years old this year. And uh, one of the areas that we uh, decided to focus on was thought very important was plastics and uh, the proliferation of plastics and what to do about it. Uh, that was the beginning of my activism around uh, the importance of dealing with the issue of plastics and recycling. So I think the most important thing to understand about plastics, which uh, most people don't get, is plastics never ever go away. Never. Uh, they're here for, once they're produced, they're here forever. Uh, you can melt them down, uh, you can send them to a garbage heap, to a landfill. Uh, all they do is break down into microplastics and break down into nanoplastics, get into our water, get into our air, get into our food supply and in the ground. And 
poison us. Uh, they poison us with chemicals, uh, all sorts of chemicals they're coated with. And once you understand that principle, then you understand why it's important to first refuse and reduce. So what I do with my personal habits, what I do uh, preaching to my neighbors, preaching to my family, uh, and to my friends and co-workers is first thing you do is refuse and reduce. That means I use as little plastic as I possibly can. Give you an example. If you look inside my cabinets, anything, uh, when I go to the store, my wife goes to the store, we can buy something in glass, we can buy something in tin or metal, we buy it in glass or tin and metal because they are easily recycled. We don't buy plastic, so the first rule is any way, anyhow we can refuse plastic. Of course, the third principle after uh, uh, refuse and reduce is reuse. And uh, that's pretty uh, simple. A lot of people don't realize that a third at least a third of everybody's garbage that goes to landfills is compostable, is composting, is fruit and vegetable rind. We collect our fruit and our vegetable rind every day and we take it out to our bin in the backyard and put it in there and turn it into compost, turn it into dirt. Another way uh, we uh, uh, reduce is uh, any plastic that we do use. And I'll be really honest with you, I'm there's plastic I use. I can't, I'm a berry lover. I love strawberries, I love blueberries. I can't find berries nine months out of the year that aren't in some plastic container. So they come in number one plastic containers. They do two things with these. One, we have ag farms, agricultural farms that reuse this stuff and they put berries in them. So we collect a certain amount and give it to them. And then the others we send to a recycling place, Michael's Brothers, which we are sure 100% to number one that they recycle and it goes to somebody that's formed into another product and it's reused. So. Reuse is just as important as refuse and reduce. When all else is said and done, then we recycle. Of course, changing your lifestyle and changing uh, habits that have been around for 50, 60 years, it really helps having a, somebody, a spouse, a partner, somebody that uh, has got your back and you got their back. And uh, one of the good things about my wife, Stephanie, is uh, she's got my back and uh, she's got my back uh, on the uh, consumption issue and she's got my back on the recycling issue. When I forget to turn the lights out, Stephanie turns them out. When she forgets, I turn them out for her. So, so um, we have the whole neighborhood involved. We have our next door neighbor bringing us her plastic bags and we'll take them to be recycled. And our neighbor across the street takes the elderly neighbors across the street from him and he'll recycle her things for her. So we have a joint effort going on in our neighborhood. So it's really rather nice. So now I'm going to take you outside and show you our little uh, recycling program. Introduce you to uh, one of our Isaac Walton League members. This is a standard black plastic bag. So this is something that is used for your garbage normally. These are not recyclable. They never decompose. They're always here. And no one that I know of in Allegheny County can recycle these. Something that you can do instead is to use a lawn and leaf bag. These are available at nearly every hardware store in Allegheny County and in Pittsburgh in general. Um, these are the same ounceage, so they have 30 gallon capacity. These also have wet strength, so it's the same as using a plastic bag. Still going to hold up to your garbage in the same way. One of these, just unfold it like a paper bag and you can place it within your standard garbage can that you may have. The only thing that you might need to do is fold it over a little bit in order for the lid to be able to fit on your trash can, which is necessary because this is a lot more open and a lot more small animals and things like that could get into your trash if you don't put the lid on here properly. Major chains like Giant Eagle, Target, and many other stores in Allegheny County they participate in bag recycling, but a lot of people don't know that it's not just the bags that they manufacture themselves. There are so many other types of bags that can be recycled at these locations. 
Oh, this is a standard giant eagle bag. A lot of people think that they just take this type of bag, but that's not the case. Um, this, they can actually accept cereal bags. They can accept bread bags. They can also accept the bags that you get fruits and vegetables in like limes, lemons, oranges, etc. They can also recycle bags from other stores such as Lowe's and they can even recycle toilet paper bags. Any plastic bag they accept for recycling. So I think that's something that's important to highlight because a lot of people are under the common misconception that it's just giant eagle bags and it's just their own brand of bags. But I think that's something that we need to highlight is not the case because this is really close to a lot of people. One of the most critical components of recycling is composting. Most of the people, the vast majority, don't compost and don't know how to compost. I'd like to give you a little, a uh, couple lessons on how to do that personally. And also with the understanding that composting is best done through public policy and through legislation. Composting is very simple. The first thing you knew, I have a container. I keep it in my kitchen and every day we collect our vegetable scraps and our fruit rind and scraps we put it in this container. And once we put it in this container every day, uh, I bring it out and I take it and I put it in my composting bin. Bring it down, we have a composting bin. Uh, I have a double composting bin because what that allows me to do is fill one up and then when that one's filled up while I'm using the other one, it's still uh, decomposing. Uh, and becoming a very rich dirt and soil. Now we're going to go over to uh, my favorite uh, recyc plastic recycling location, which is Michael Brothers. I'm going to take you over there. Recycling center, one-stop shop. Plastics, glass, Aluminum, metal, styrofoam, they do it all here. As you can see, this place is pretty damn busy. Uh, normally when I come over here, uh, you have anywhere from two to five, six different cars waiting in line to recycle. <laughs> This is where all number three to seven goes here. It's all my number three to seven. And then over here is my number one and my number two. And here's where your aluminum cans go in here. put glass in here and it doesn't matter what color glass it could be brown blue green clear they take all glass here and they separate it out themselves and clean it you can see right here the assortment of metal uh, containers from paint cans to uh, uh, frying uh, you know uh, machines all cardboard here at Michael's Brothers isn't just corrugated cardboard this is corrugated but you also have cardboard like beer comes in Toothpaste comes in, toilet paper comes in. That's all card stock. All sorts of other stuff. They recycle styrofoam here. Unlike a lot of places uh, who just recycle styrofoam, plat, uh, styrofoam packaging, they recycle any styrofoam as long as it has a number on it. They also compost here and they have a composting operation going on here which we hope to help them expand into the individual families and households uh, throughout Allegheny County. So, uh, we pulled a feasibility study which I'm going to bring to you guys from five years ago about composting and uh, uh, what we're going to try to do is we're going to try to get the county to set up a public-private uh, composting partnership where they actually have selected boroughs 
I'm, this, I'm smirking because I was with the DEP for a two-hour yeah. meeting on Monday because I want to start accepting food scraps. Yep. And the permit to get it is about a year and a half in the works to get it. And I said, this is stuff on everybody's kitchen table. Do we really need to drag this out a year and a half? Like, let's get a solution quickly. Uh, I'll have to be able to put a bin here. Yeah. People could drop it off on the weekends. We just have to get the proper permits. Well, we, we're going to get them for you. All right. Uh, we we got... It. Like I said, we got members inside county council now. Okay. Uh, one of our members is running for county executive. Great. We're going to have the political power to push this oh, program I'm forward. Fine. But if you want to come here off hours, if you want to come here on a Sunday, or you want to come here uh, 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 Saturday after 1 o'clock, they put the bins outside here. Over here, you have three bins. You'll have number one, number two, and number three to seven. And then over here, you'll have the aluminum bins, the glass bins, and the metal bins over here. So I'd like to say in summation that plastics is a major problem. It's destroying our oceans, it's destroying our health, it's destroying our planet, and we need to do something about it. Number one, we need to stop subsidizing the fossil fuel industry. We need to stop using taxpayer money to pay for the poisons that are killing us. Number two, the people that produce the plastics, the people that produce fossil fuels, need to take responsibility to clean up their mess. Until those two things happen, the problem is not going to fundamentally be solved. But what we can do in the meantime is we can take personal responsibility, we can change our lifestyles, we can refuse, reduce, and reuse.
bandits plunder the planet. How can you stand it? Don't it make you real mad? 